What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So as you guys saw in the last video, I had a bit of a mishap. Kind of didn't see a bump in the road in a car park and I drove straight into it, managed to push the intercooler up and it's now damaged something. I've lost all the coolant, but I managed to drive home because it wasn't too far away. Today, we're gonna get her up on jack stands, take the wheels off, pull the bottom off the car, front bumper, all that sort of stuff, and diagnose what happened. I think that the radiator may have cracked or been damaged or one of the connections on it, or there might just been a pipe down there that got squashed and decided to burst because it was under a bit of pressure. Anyway, guys, we're gonna jump into this and see if we can fix it. So if it is the radiator that died, it'll be finally time to upgrade to something else and get that cooling system a bit better. I know when you track these things, they can get quite hot. So I have to get the jack under the jack points and jack it up. Because the car is so low, I have to put wood under the front wheels just to get it up that little bit higher. Stack up a few, maybe like three planks of wood. For any of you that do run quite a low setup, um, and have your suspension dropped quite low. Mine's, mine's not super low, but it's just because the front of the 1M body, um, the underbelly and everything sits quite low. Um, the wheel fitment and like the fitment in regards to tie and everything does look good. If you guys are running your setups quite low, um, it might be interesting to watch this video. I'm quite interested to know what happened and what made me lose all my coolant. And I guess that happens from running the ride height quite low in these one series, um, especially when running a big intercooler. I've got a 7.5 inch VRFS race intercooler. Hopefully, I'm, I'm just hoping it's a pipe because it'll be a cheap fix. So on the front of the bumper here, there's these little clips that keep this grill, this mesh grill in position. Now, what happened was when the car bottomed out, the bumper pushed back a bit and these little things that stick out pushed into my intercooler. So I've gone and cut two of them, the ones that went into the intercooler shorter, just in case that ever were to happen again, it won't do as much damage. Now I'm just gonna pull off the belly pan underneath the car and then I'll probably turn her on and I'll see where the coolant is coming from. Turns out it wasn't the radiator. So no no new shiny parts, unfortunately. Um, but <laughs> got the boy, um, the Kyver on the phone here. <laughs> got the water, been tipping it down the coolant reservoir. It's It broke off on the actual pipe. You probably can't see too well, but this part here, the plastic is broken. You can just see it on the camera. See how the edge of it comes up? I'm gonna have to order a new pipe and I'm hoping that's the only issue um, I've got with the car. I'm hoping that I don't put it all back together and the radiator shit itself too. I used to go to the gym heaps um, before this whole COVID-19 thing. You guys can see the fitness videos that I posted on the channel. Um, I guess that the, the older videos. But as of lately, I've gotten into hiking. I like going on a few hikes day trips um, i'm planning an overnight hike so i've got all the gear for it i might do a gear review and an overhaul of all my hiking equipment just to show you guys what i um my i guess my setup for that because that's something else that i'm quite into so i'll, I'll share the experiences with that as well right, guys so it's been a couple of days now fdp euro have sent me out a new coolant hose 
um, to replace the broken one with. So I'm gonna be installing it on the car and hopefully get it back up and running today. So I've also decided to pick up five liters worth of Penrite premix coolant. So most people that modify BMWs themselves, I have read on forums that you sh it is recommended to use genuine BMW coolant, which is the blue stuff. So I bought six liters of concentrate to put in, but since I'm gonna be replacing the water pump soon and the thermostat, I've decided to just use the green stuff for now as there's already green stuff in the system and I won't have to completely flush it out. So I'm gonna run that stuff for now and then when I replace the water pump and the thermostat, I'm gonna completely flush the system and put that genuine blue coolant in. So I'll have to run water through it a few times, try and dilute it down and then flush it all out just so that I don't mix them together because you should never mix two different types of coolant together and always maintain the same product in your vehicle. So to pull out the hose, I had to pull out the coolant expansion tank, which sits up the top here. Um, so I had to disconnect all the hoses and stuff for that. That's sitting out of the car. So I pulled out the top part of the hose that's just hanging out the bottom there. I just need to get down through the engine bay. There's three screws. So there's two points on the bottom part of the pipe and then there's another mounting point on the side here. So I'll have to get in there and undo those three then I can pull that out. So to access the one on the right side, I managed to get my hand down there with the screwdriver and undo it. And then on this side, it was a bit hard with all the pipes. So I pulled the cooling fan up a bit and accessed it from the bottom just with a little ratchet. So I managed to get both screws off underneath. Now the challenging part is the mounting point over on the right side. I think I'm gonna have to take the charge pipe off just so I can access it. And then once I unscrew that, I'll be able to pull it all out. So I struggled to get it out of the car. So I ended up just like, pulling it with a bit of force and I snapped the bracket on it, but it doesn't matter because it's the old one. So now I just gotta be careful putting in the new one um, as that one was pretty hard to pull out and I can't break the new one. So this is gonna be a bit of a challenge. I had to pull the charge pipe up. So I had some more room in there to get down to take the screw out of the bracket for the coolant line down the very bottom. This has been the most frustrating install on this car to date. I would very, very appreciate having a hoist right now, but I mean, this has been such a pain of a task to do, and I don't really um, ever wanna do this particular replacement of the pipe again. But there's a few other things that I gotta do, like I gotta do the sump gasket, I gotta do potentially the water pump soon. I know the car's getting, it's got 90,000 kilometers now, so I reckon that'll probably start to die soon. Potentially might get the valves cleaned, I don't know. So the coolant expansion tank is back in. So I put the coolant return line back in down the bottom. All the connections have been clipped together. The only things that I need to do now is just screw it up from the two points down there and then the, the attachment point down the bottom there. So I found it a lot easier to install the new line opposed to pulling out the old one. I don't know why, but the old one was so hard to get out. It was like impossible. That's why I had to snap it, <laughs> but it was old. It was, um, it was already broken, so it didn't really matter. So when I bought the car, I, I did a few um, maintenance things on it. It was pretty low key, so it didn't need an awful lot done to it. There were a few things like the oil filter housing gasket, uh, brake pads, brake fluid, just all that general sort of service stuff, spark plugs, coils. Um, I did all of that, replaced a lot of the new coolant lines. As it is getting closer to 100,000 now, I am having to do the sump gasket, the water pump, stuff like that clean the valves. So I don't think I'm gonna throw any more modifications at the car for maybe a few more months um, until I get the all the maintenance and stuff up to date on the car, just so that she runs really well. I think the next thing that I, the next modification that I will put on it will maybe be an upgraded radiator or a um, upgraded low pressure fuel pump. I'm tossing up between those two. Um, but since I got to clean the valves, I'm maybe thinking port injection, just because the ma intake manifold will already be off. So may as well just chuck the sandwich plate in there while they're getting cleaned. And that way that's already installed. So I'm a bit unsure. Um, I'm trying to tee up with a few companies. I've done so much to it that I would appreciate um, other companies trying to help me out. For any companies that are watching this video, if you do want to um, support the car and sort something out so that I can run some other modifications, I would be happy to put your labeling over the whole side of the car. So um, that'll get seen in all the content. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna try and finish this job and see if she runs well and see if there's no other coolant leaks. All right, so everything's back together now. All hoses are connected, cooling fans back in place, charge pipes connected, and then screwed up everything I had to underneath there. So what I'm gonna do now 
is put the key in the car. So turn the ignition on, put the heat heater on full, turn off lights just to save battery. Press the accelerator all the way down till you hear the water pump engage. Okay. So the water pump has engaged. Um, and it's just bleeding the system of air. So this way I'll know where the coolant level sits in the expansion tank once it's bled all the air out of the system because I've taken hoses off and on. The water pump doesn't sound too healthy. Sounds pretty bad to be honest. Um, I think that's something I'll need to replace soon. That'll run for like a good three to five minutes and then when you hear the noise stop, so it's completed bleeding. I mean, you can do it a second time if you want, but I probably wouldn't bother. Just check the coolant tank, check the level, top it up, and then you should be good to go. All right, so I'm just letting the car run up until it gets to 100 degrees Celsius. So the car's on 90 degrees Celsius oil temp at the moment. I'm gonna let it get up to 100 degrees just so that the thermostat kicks in and that way the cooling system starts working just so I can see that everything's running. Um, there's no leaks or anything. I think that's the way it's meant you're meant to do it. Let the thermostat open just so the whole cooling system works. So another thing that I noticed was my 1M washer bottle. Um, one of the tubes wasn't connected properly. One of the clips was missing. Every time I filled up my washer bottle to wash my windscreen and my lights, water would pool on the ground under the car and I was always wondering why. All right guys, so the car's back together. As you can see, I just got the wheel on, the front bumper, all the guard linings and the belly pans back on. But anyway guys, just thought I'd do a video just diagnosing what went wrong, let you guys know and how to fix it. So I'll probably upload some exhaust clips soon, some in-car driving now that I can. And yeah, I'll try and pump out some more content, keep you guys posted um, on the car. So if you enjoyed watching my videos, please subscribe and make sure you like the video. Don't forget to turn on post notifications as well so you get notified when I upload next. She's back. She's finally back again. So I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.